need to know this. Conservatives are now calling President Obama's ads against Mitt Romney and Bain Capital attacks against capitalism. In a press conference on Tuesday, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell gave his take on the administration's criticism of Bain Capital by saying this. I do think that it's interesting to note that the whole notion of our success and of capitalism seems to be under attack by this administration across the board, not just in the campaign, but through the actions of government itself. Then on Tuesday, House Majority Leader Eric Cantor went on Fox so-called news and had this little discussion on capitalism. To denigrate success in business, to denigrate the launching of new business or the turnaround of existing businesses, I think just absolutely reflects um, a disconnect with what America is about. But, but why, why would uh, Representative Clyburn and the President do this? Why would they attack capitalism? As you said, America is a free enterprise country, always has been. That is the American tradition. But, it's, but capitalism seems to be attacked by the President. Oh. So, since Republicans are quick to defend private equity, or pirate equity firms like Bain Capital, even going so far as to argue that an attack on Bain is an attack on capitalism, maybe we should take a step back and explain what it is that a pirate equity firm like Bain Capital does, and then ask the question whether or not this is really American capitalism at its finest. By the way, you can find a great explanation of what private equity or pirate equity is at former Labor Secretary Robert Reich's website, robertreich.org. But for now, let's see what happens when pirate equity firms are allowed to run roughshod over an American city like our little democracy bill. The old-fashioned capitalism, you know, venture capitalism, is where somebody puts up, for example, $15,000 to start Facebook and ends up with stock worth billions. That's a true story. It's called venture capitalism, or being an angel investor. It has a history that goes all the way back to Sir Francis Drake's expedition in the Golden Hind in the late 1500s that Queen Elizabeth put up the money for. The person putting up the money is quite literally the capitalist. There's very few capitalists in America. They're the people who put up the money, and they make their money just waiting for that money to make money. But private equity, what used to be called leveraged buyouts before the industry changed its name because it had gotten such a bad reputation in the 80s and 90s, and I call pirate equity. Now, that's a whole different animal from venture capital. Here's how pirate equity works in democracyville. Here we have the residential area the, the, you know, where the folks live. We've got Main Street with the fire department, police department, hospital, school, grocery store, pet stores, steel plant, the bank where the banksters work, Bain Capital and the mansion where the rich people live, okay, the, the investors. So here's the steel plant that Bain has got its eyes on. So first they get some money from some of their investors. It could be people who work at Bain or it could be people outside. And they use it to buy the steel plant. Okay, now Bain owns the steel plant. So how do they make it more profitable? Well, first of all, they fire a couple of people, send them back to their homes in the suburbs, in the, you know, here in, in the residential area. And then they take you know, other people and give them part-time jobs and strip them of their health care benefits and do away with their pensions and things and you know, just kind of basically throw them back in here. So they're stripping out the, the main expenses, most, the major expense of most companies is payroll. Get rid of that. So then Bain wants to make even more money. So they put up the steel plant as collateral and they go to the bank and they ask for a pile of money. So the bank gives them a pile of money with the bank, with the company as collateral, and with that money, they pay back the investors, so they no longer have to worry about the investors anymore, and anything that they make for, forward from this point is gravy. And when they take that loan, Bain takes a commission, and when they pay back the investors, Bain takes a commission. The steel plant now has a massive debt, but the, the interesting thing is under our tax code, see, Pirate equity is all about profiting off loopholes, tax loopholes. Under our tax code, when a company makes payments on interest on debt, that's tax deductible. So the company actually looks more profitable on paper. Never mind the fact that it's now wiped out, saddled with debt. Next, Bain sucks borrowed money out of, uh, money out of the borrowed money to pay back the original investors. I, I pointed that out to you. And, and then here's the steel plant, now cut bare to the bone, a shelf of its former self. Bain then sells the steel plant, or bankrupts it, and pockets 20% of the profits. So they get basically all the money. 
And here's the kicker. People at Bain, they pay a maximum 15% income tax. The, the, this is why it's organized as a partnership rather than a corporation. So that all the partners, they take the money and they, they pay a maximum 15% income tax. This is a great deal. So they do it again to the local grocery store. So, you know, let's just, you know, rinse, wash, repeat. And they fire a couple of people and send them back to the, to the suburbs, lay, a, you know, lay off some more people and, and off on, on it goes, put the company in debt. And now the steel plant is pretty much dead. And now the grocery store is in a crisis. Meanwhile, in the suburbs, and Bain has taken their money out of the grocery store by this point, more money for, for Mr. Romney. Now, back here in the suburbs, you got all these people who don't have jobs, don't have be benefits, don't have money, and so they're not spending money anymore at the pet store, or at the grocery store for that matter. So the pet store lays off a couple of people and eventually goes out of business, throwing people back here into their, into their, uh, into their homes, which causes, now these people don't have any money, so all of a sudden, their homes are up for sale. They're, they're already being foreclosed on. So we have all these foreclosures. Democracyville is being wiped out. Now, because they're foreclosed, their homes are wiped out, and they don't have any income, they, they're not paying taxes anymore. So the school has to fire some teachers who also end up with their homes being foreclosed and uh, get rid of the school bus. The school ceases to be functional. The hospital really can't provide much services. The police department has to lay off some of their people who, again, are no longer buying things. The fire department, they privatize it if they're into Ron Paul. And boom, this is what you get. Here's Democracyville now, completely destroyed by pirate equity. But at Bain Capital, everyone is rich. This is what Republicans think is American capitalism. This is what they're defending. This is what Mitt Romney thinks qualifies him to be president. It's not actually capitalism. It's pirate equity. It's exploitation of loopholes in the tax code, pure and simple. I'll let President Obama speak for himself on this issue. I think my view of private equity is that uh, it, is, it is set up to maximize profits. My opponent, Governor Romney, his main calling card for why he thinks he should be president is his business experience. Yeah, he's not going out there touting his experience in Massachusetts. He's saying, I'm a business guy and I know how to fix it, and this is his business. And when you're president, as opposed to the head of a private equity form, uh, firm, then you, your job is not simply to maximize profits. Your job is to figure out how everybody in the country has a fair shot. Your job is to think about those workers who get laid off and how are we paying for their retraining. Your job is to... It's Wednesday. Are you ready to run?